This is a very special video. You want to know why it's so special? It's special because this is my first video after reaching 1K subscribers here on YouTube. At the time I'm recording this, I don't have 1K yet. I have 981, but I am going to post it once I reach that milestone. It's a big milestone and I worked hard to reach it. I'll be honest here. This YouTube genetics activity is everything to me. It's one of the few things I'm good at in life. I hope I get to make a living doing this being able to sit in front of my monitor and make videos about various genomes and earn money from this is literally my version of the American dream. So I can't understate how much I love all you guys for watching my content. Anyway, uh, this video is part four and the last part of my videos about the Tarim mummies. In this video, I will cover the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype and traits of four high quality genomes from Bronze Age Tarim Basin, those genomes being Amina, who is a woman with C4 mitochondrial DNA, Alara, who is a woman with C4 mitochondrial DNA, Elvira, who is also a woman with C4 mitochondrial DNA, and Asen, who is a woman, once again all four of these are women, with mitochondrial DNA C4. Let's start with the first sample, who is Amina. Uh, she is predicted to have dark brown color eyes, East Asian snub-shaped nose, and black hair with my Nashako tool and with my eye shape prediction tool she's actually predicted to have East Asian or Oceanian eye shape this is why here I depicted her with sort of an East Asian looking uh, face uh, when it comes to Combs met variation she has actually met met which is warrior uh, slower dopamine reuptake more dopamine better at attention and motivation tasks and it's a super European genotype to have which is kind of surprising because she doesn't really have any modern European uh, ancestry in the MTHFR gene she has one genotype which possibly impairs folate metabolism uh, in DRD2 she has one genotype that is pretty rare that that uh, causes less dopamine D2 receptors and another one that's pretty common that um, increases dopamine D2 receptors and uh, the one that's pretty common is also what I call pro pro variation on my channel so she does not have the European no-go learner mutation here and she has higher odds of schizophrenia, more dopamine D2, all that stuff. Uh, when it comes to OXTR, she has one genotype for higher levels of empathy and another one for lack of empathy, but the one for lack of, of empathy, I place more value onto this one because there is more research backing it, so I think uh, I can say that she has the sociopath gene here. When it comes to European lactose persistence mutation, she does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. Nothing surprising here. It does not mean she was lactose intolerant. Uh, la European lactose persistence mutation is the lactose persistence mutation most typically found in Europeans. But there's other, there's like an Arab one, there's an East Asian one. She's probably got some other lactose persistence mutation, not the one that Europeans have. When it comes to EDAR, she does have derived EDAR. And she, in fact, she's got two derived variants in EDAR. Definitely very East Asian uh, phenotype, thicker hair, increased odds of sho shovel-shaped incisors, all that stuff. When, uh, she's also got one genotype, which uh, is super rare. 0.09% of people have this genotype, and it causes a decreased risk of age-related macular degeneration. Uh, she's got another genotype that's pretty rare that causes higher risk of rheumatoid arthritis. She's got another genotype that's maybe not so rare that's, that's causing a reduced risk of male pattern boldness. Uh, very good news for her male relatives. And uh, finally, when it comes to phenotype, returning back to phenotype, she's most likely got blue eye haplotype 1 and no blue eye haplotype 2 or BH3 or BH4. Now moving on to her polygenic traits, she's got a high risk score for coronary heart disease, she's got a high risk score for type 2 diabetes, uh, she's got a super high risk score for brain aneurysm, um, she's got an average risk score for schizophrenia, uh, she's got a low risk score for bipolar disorder, uh, she's got a average risk score for asthma, um, she's got an average risk score for Parkinson's disease, and she's got a low risk score for type 1 diabetes. This is the second individual also woman. All four of these are women, just to remind you. And she is predicted to have brown color eyes, Indian Greek shape nose, so kind of a longer, uh, narrower, more aquiline nose shape. As you can see, her nose shape in the image I depicted her is looking kind of Indian and Greek at the same time. <laughs> uh, that's kind of how I de decided to depict her here. And she is predicted to have East Asian eye shape with my 
uh, eye shape predictor tool. So kind of a Indian shape nose, but East Asian eye shape is what I'm getting for this this individual. Um, with my hair ID tool, she's predicted to have straight hair at 49%, followed by wavy at 32, followed by curly at 16, followed by kinky at zero. So she's probably got straight hair as well. She's got one genotype that uh, causes slightly impaired folate metabolism. Another genotype that uh, is making Ehlers Danlos syndrome possible. I'm gonna uh, on the screen. I'm gonna show you what that is, what that looks like. And she's got um, this one genotype in OXTR, which decreases OXTR expression. So this is sort of the sociopath gene, as I was talking about. And the second one, she's also got the second uh, uh, genotype in, in uh, OXTR that also causes lower OXTR expression. That's labeled lack of empathy on the screen here. Uh, so definitely, the sociopath she definitely has the sociopath gene. And uh, when it comes to MC1 arm, she's got um, super rare actually homozygous genotype in MC1R for red hair and it's most typical in Spanish people today super rare genotype and she when it comes to uh, phenotype once again returning back to that she's most likely got blue or hepatotype 1 no BH2 or BH3 and BH4 is undetermined but most probably she does not have BH4 because it's a very uh, Mediterranean uh, variant to have like if you're Spanish or ba Basque or like North African or like Jewish, you might have BH4, but she's uh, she's not a Mediterranean at all, so she def definitely doesn't have it. And here's a lot of polygenic risk score. She's got an average risk score for brain aneurysm, a low risk score for type 2 diabetes. Um, she's got a super low risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, she's got a super low risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, she's got a low risk score for asthma. Uh, she's got a low risk score for type 1 diabetes and uh, she's got a super high risk score for ovarian carcinoma. Now moving on to Elvira. Elvira is predicted to have dark brown eyes, East Asian snub shaped nose and black hair. This is how I depicted her here. She's also predicted to have actually Amerindian eye shape uh, and less so East Asian. So here she's scoring 75% Amerindian for eye shape followed by 17% East Asian. So she's actually, her eye shape is somehow more Amerindian than it is East Asian, according to my eye shape predictor tool. When it comes to DRD2, she does not have the European no-go learner variation. I don't think any of these women have it. So definitely more dopamine D2 receptors, higher odds of schizophrenia, and she also has normal A2A2 genotype in the TAC1 variation, which as you can see on the screen here leads to better avoidance of errors, uh, normal OCD risk, normal tolerance of dyskinesia, basically normal amount of, which is more dopamine D2 receptors, whereas if you have A1A1 genotype, you would have less dopamine D2 receptors and all kinds of risks such as ADHD and like uh, OCD, various, whatever, alcohol dependence, yeah, all kinds of all kinds of risks that come with lower, less amount of dopamine D2 receptors, right? For, when it comes to OXTR, she has the, once again, she has the sociopath genotype in this variation of OXTR, that's kind of the lesser important variation, and she was not genotyped for the more important variation, so I can tell you, uh, just based on this one, it seems that she has the sociopath gene. When it comes to EDAR, she's got homozygous genotype for derived EDAR, East Asian EDAR, um, and straighter thicker hair, increased odds of shallow shaped incisors, all those East Asian facial traits, does not have European lactose persistence mutation, and she's also got a genotype that makes that uh, makes her predisposed at, uh, as you can see on the screen here, 3.8 times or higher increased risk of Alzheimer's. She has got one genotype that uh, predisposes her to age-related macular degeneration, and she does not even have blue eye hepatotype 1 or any of the other blue eye hepatotypes that follow. She is one of the darker individuals uh, in this list. And BH1 is not a specifically European genotype to have. Like you see, the previous ones had BH1. Um, BH1 is not something that only Europeans have, like East Asians, American Indians, South Asians. Um, they A lot of them have BH1, blue eye hepatotype 1. Now moving on to Elvira's polygenic traits, she's got a super high risk score for schizophrenia, she's got an average risk score for type 2 diabetes, um, she's got a high risk score for brain aneurysm, she's got an average risk score for type 1 diabetes, uh, she's got a super high risk score for stroke, she's got a below average risk score for coronary heart disease, she's got a low risk score for bipolar disorder, uh, she's got a average risk score for asthma. Uh, she's got an average risk score for Parkinson's disease. And now let's move on to a SEN.
pronounced as sen. Uh, now this is what she's predicted to look like with Manasha Koto. She's predicted to have dark brown eyes, East Asian snub-shaped nose and black hair. Uh, same as all of the other women, they all have dark brown eyes. Uh, snub-shaped nose, well, except for one that had a Greek-shaped nose, but most of them have small snub-shaped noses and black hair and brown eyes. And uh, what for eye shape prediction for a sen is um, actually seems to be East Asian as well, 62% likelihood of East Asian eye shape. So she's quite East Asian looking too. Uh, when it comes to DRD2, she's got this, she does not have the European no-go letter mu mutation in profinitin pro variation of DRD2, which here is on the very top, it's labeled as 1.6 higher schizophrenia risk, but really it's normal schizophrenia risk, it's just that Europeans who have uh, TT or AA here, Europeans have lower schizophrenia risk compared to everybody else. Well, not all Europeans, for example, I have CC genotype here as well, but most Europeans tend to have uh, the no-go learner mutation there. When it comes to ACT1, she has a genotype for lower odds of cannabis-induced psychosis, very interesting genotype to have. I wonder if in her culture, uh, in the Tarim Basin, I wonder if they cultivated and smoked cannabis for its psychoactive properties. Maybe they did. When it comes to Comte's vomit variation, she is heterozygous for it, meaning intermediate Comte enzyme activity, intermediate levels of dopamine. When it comes to OXTR, uh, she has got both the sociopath variations, and she's actually she's actually homozygous for both of them, and uh, definitely very sociopathic based on her genotype in OXTR. She does not have the European lactose persistence mutation. None of them do. And she also has two derived variants in EDAR, definitely very uh, East Asian phenotypes, shovel-shaped incisors, the picanthic folds, and shovel-shaped incisors. But you see, it's not just the EDAR that she's got that's East Asian, it's also everything else. She's just overall um, very East Asian when it comes to her features and uh, phenotype. Uh, now, when it comes to, she's also got this genotype, which pretty rare genotype that causes uh, issues with obesity and insulin. I actually have this genotype as well. Uh, very interesting stuff. It's only found at 4.11% of code gen users. And she does have BEH1, no BEH2, no BEH3, no BEH4. Uh, pretty dark in terms of uh, features. And here's a sense polygenic risk score. She's got a high risk score for coronary heart disease, a high risk score for type 2 diabetes. Uh, she's got a high risk score for Parkinson's disease. She's got an average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, she's got an average risk score for bipolar disorder. Uh, she's got a low risk score for type 1 diabetes. She's got a average risk score for asthma. And finally, she's got an average risk score for brain aneurysm. Out of all these samples, Amina is the highest coverage sample, so I will use Amina's GED match results as a representative of the whole group. All four samples are quite similar to each other and to Amina, so I only need one representative to show you what these Tarim mummies tend to score. This is what Amina scores with Eurogenes K13. A very interesting result. Uh, pretty typical for a Tarim mummy, maybe slightly less West Asian than what you see what you typically see with Tarim mummies, uh, but very atypical for, say, Eastern hunter-gatherer, because Eastern hunter-gatherers would not score 10% Siberian, Eastern hunter-gatherers would not score 24% Amerindian. Uh, see the oracles here, and G25 shows that this individual is a mixture of Eastern hunter-gatherer or West Siberian hunter-gatherer, plus something from um, America or East Asia. So it's actually more East Asian, more East Eurasian than Eastern Hunter Gathers. It's most similar to Ancient North Eurasian, such as Malta 1, as you can see with the Oracle here, but it's still, it's not an Ancient North Eurasian, it's a mixture of Eastern Hunter Gatherer plus uh, an East Eurasian source, such as Amerindian or uh, East Asian, whatever. Uh, these calculators map it as it, some, some, most of these calculators seem to agree that it's Amerindian or Beringian, the East Eurasian source of ancestry in this individual. Uh, but there is an East Eurasian source, it's not just an Eastern Hunter Gatherer, uh, it's an Eastern Hunter Gatherer or a West Siberian Hunter Gatherer mixed with uh, something from East, Eastern Asia or uh, America. But there is some affinities to South Central Asians and uh, West Asians in general. There is some affinities to BMAC and there is some affinities to Caucasus hunter-gatherers and Iranian Neolithic farmers. Uh, that's from the Eastern hunter-gatherer side because Eastern hunter-gatherers in general have some similarities to uh, West Asians. And because of this Eastern hunter-gatherer admixture, there is actually some similarity to South Central Asians. She, you see she's scoring 16.7% South Central Asian here with MDLP K23B. Once again, that is due to uh, Eastern hunter-gatherer 
affinities to South Central Asians and West Asians and CHG and Iranian Neolithic, right? But you know what? I think it could also be due to admixture. I think this could be explained by this individual simply having some, uh, I don't know, BMAC or Iranian Neolithic farmer admixture. That's pretty much possible. Uh, based on their timeline and where this individual lived. So, but still, with the oracle still getting modeled as a mixture of Mansi plus Ojibwa, a mixture of seemingly Siberians plus uh, Native Americans. Seems to be a mixture of Siberians and Native Americans, such as Mansi or Hunt plus Afabaskans or Ojibwa. This is what she scores with Pan DNA LK10. You can see the affinities between Eastern, Hun Eastern Hunter Gatherers and CHG here as well, because she's scoring 29% CHG. By the way, Eastern Hunter Gatherers, they score a lot of CHG. Uh, like with this with this calculator, they do, they do not just score WHG plus Amerindian. They score a lot of CHG. So there is CHG affinities in Eastern Hunter Gatherers, and this is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Uh, very interesting result. You can see she's got a lot of East Asian admixture and ancestral South Eurasian as well. Uh, and with the Oracle, this Oracle is really clear. This Oracle makes everything very clear what she is and what she isn't. She is a mixture of two thirds Eastern Hunter Gatherer plus one third. Uh, East Asian, or alternatively, she is a mixture of, uh, let's look, line number uh, line number 7, half Eastern Hunter Gatherer plus half Native American. What's super interesting about these samples is that despite their features, they all have very East Asian traits, such as shovel-shaped incisors, they all have EDAR, they all have uh, East Asian eye shape and nose shape, but despite this, they're actually majority West Eurasian. That's kind of interesting how uh, this little bit of East Eurasian admixture that they have contributed to their phenotype in such a way that it completely dominated their phenotype. Thank you guys for finishing the video. You can download the files in 23andMe format from the link which is in the description. And also I want to remind you that you can get the raw data files for all samples featured on this channel on my Google Drive. Thanks for 1K subscribers, guys. Now I'm actually going to start making money from what I do here. Very motivating. Goodbye.